Hello again, this is episode two. Uh, this is Vernon Ferguson, designer. Uh, this is Chuck Jordan, writer. This is Heather Logos, designer. Dave Bogan, art director. And Dave Brilsman, shameless layabout. We made pretty good time coming back from the North Pole, eh, Max? So at the beginning of the season, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out kind of what sort of themes we wanted for the season. Um, and we kind of honed in on things based out of mythology or just um there is sort of a theme <laughs> when you connect them all together yeah well i mean we, we we're, we're often talking about kind of overall legends. what 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 could it what could it be about and it, that that just seems to be something that sam and max are always getting involved in sort of mythical creatures and stuff like that we ended up not per se really stressing that this is a connection between all the themes all the different things, uh, letting it be a little bit more organic than saying, okay, this episode is going to be this mythical character, but it didn't end up, end up being sort of a loose connection between many of the episodes. I do remember right at the beginning of the season planning that you, Brendan, said <clears throat> you just you just wanted to go to a, a, a bunch of exotic locations, and we kind of made a list, and there was Easter Island, there was the North Pole, and Mount, Mount Olympus was on it. We didn't right, right. get to that one, right, maybe later. Do you want to talk about the triangle, Dave? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is there you want me to talk about the triangle? No, no. It's Goes a very from one pretty place cool to the next. Triangle, huh? Three, three yeah, corners. Yeah, the the you got that from that portal game, right? <laughs> the what? You the, got that, that from the game, portal game. Portal? Oh, yeah, well, that's what it was based on. That game, which I haven't played. The, the Easter yeah. Island thing actually was, um, we, had just, we, had, we had really just talked about sort of tropical islands and tiki bars and that kind of thing. Um, and I, I wasn't completely sold on Easter Island per se, uh, but then when we thought about the stone heads and Abe Lincoln falling in love or getting the hot for some stone head, it just seemed to be, okay, well, it's coming together. we got to go there now. So. And we tried really hard to combine as many uh, mythological concepts in one yeah. episode as we could with Easter Island and the Bermuda Triangle and Atlantis. I feel yeah. like there was one we were trying to push for that didn't make it, hmm. but I don't recall. I don't know. I, I do. Uh, when I was a kid, I really loved all the uh, tales of the paranormal and stuff like that. Um, and uh, and so uh, all these kind of lost, all these people who are lost and that sort of thing, those were always things of interest to me and things like the time of youth. So um, we, we just decided to try to get them all in one episode. No, I was just glad we finally got some tiki culture. Yeah. yeah. I was just glad that I believe that that's the longest fart joke in video game history. Um, oh, I don't know. No, yeah, okay. Yeah, you're right. I want to get an official ruling on that, but for now, I'm saying that it stands. The record stands. And uh, you did the recording of that yourself, am I right? Uh, it was yes. the smelliest fart joke. That was the best take of the five that I did for them. <laughs> All in a row by the fifth, you were definitely. That was a long time. day. <laughs> I guess I can say something about the triangle. I think the designers were um, challenging the artist to design new portals and <laughs> trying to make them absolutely harder each time a different kind of portal showed up. So now they are moving and we're throwing things in and out of them. And now we can all move in three dimensions things. while spinning. <laughs> spinning, That's moving. There's another case solved. Talking. Anyway, I do remember that we wanted to. Uh, <laughs> the the portal originally the colors on the inside of it were inverted, um, and I, I think it did look nicer that way. Unfortunately, one of the puzzles depends on you re remembering this is the red triangle because yeah. they had to make a connection between a red gong and a red triangle. So we really wanted to redify that thing. I really think that the puzzles in this around the triangles and the portals were all very very clever. Um, if a bit, well, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know that I would have yeah. figured, honestly, I don't know how many of these I would have figured out on my own. I also want to give props to Jake Rodkin for coming up with these really cool, um, openings. Yeah. Each one has a different title card and, and kind of. They are good. Yeah. I kept trying it. to get a, a big, uh, um, in search of, uh, influence. Exactly. For the title card here, because it has Moai heads and Amelia Earhart. And I started explaining it to people, and they had no idea what it was, and I felt really old. I still don't. <laughs> what are you talking about? I totally know. Well, since we're giving props, and I just saw the credits, uh, Randy Tudor, does he ever come in on any of these discussion sessions? But 
I really, I love that guy. I just want to say every time that I can how awesome Randy is. Randy is really He is the guy that just makes this game happen. Anytime uh, you fans at home want to thank somebody, you should thank Randy because seriously, he is an amazing person. He makes order out of chaos and functionality. Yeah, it, it's just, he just figures out how to make everything happen. And he rides a Harley. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's a cool guy. And you don't realize how much he does until... He's not doing it. <laughs> Randy, <laughs> often. Randy is very magical and secretive, and things fall apart when he disappears. Yes. Which is why we try to chain him to his desk and not let him go anywhere. Alone. Have ever been on vacation? Yes. yes. Short but periods. Yes. I remember I was freelancing. I was remembering how it seemed like I would just... You know, just be sitting at home writing jokes, and I would send them in somebody, and then it would this magically this game would get made. And then when I started working here, it was kind of the same thing. <laughs> you just write jokes and then send it off to Randy, and this magically this game gets made. I love the grumpy Moai. He's, he's on my business card. <laughs> Isn't there a story behind the grumpy Moai? It's Dave. <laughs> um, well, um, I think there is a story. I do remember that. Um, Brian had designed this environment. It was very, very well done, and uh, he just thought it, it would look nice if it was buried. Um, or was that you? I don't know, remember. I, I remember you guys had been talking it over and just thought that wanted to be buried, and then we realized, oh yeah, that's that's actually going to make this much funnier to have this guy never say anything intelligible. So that was a good example of serendipity and humor. I think it was so his feet would be further down. We're not right. You got down there. Oh, no, no, you're right, you're right. Wasn't there uh, another story about one of the other Moa heads? The grumpy one? The other guy uh, who well, ends up smoking the We made one of them female, but made no distinguishing characteristic of it. It had to be female. I thought it had to do something with a surly forum member or something. Oh, no, it was just your general uh, stick up the butt type attitude towards what you guys think you're supposed to be funny. We just wanted them to be, um, to have their own personalities, to each be distinct from each other, and that their personalities would sort of dictate how you dealt with them and how you were able to solve the puzzles. I don't think it was directly linked to any forum members. Well, I'm sure we could do it retroactively if we wanted to think no, about it. No, <laughs> there was no intentional... Uh, anything where we were trying to be like somebody. I do remember when we were first thinking of those characters that we, I, I remember thinking of them like the Three Stooges, or they're, they're three guys that are always fighting, or always, they're always upset about something. We, and then later, since we did have the idea for episode four to have these guys that would crush people's spirits, that they, they would all be downcast in different ways. One would be the, oh, we're doomed, doomed kind of person. One would be just the, I'm really uptight, and then one would just be constantly storming. And so we wanted to, to tie those things together with their abilities some way, like each one has the power of lightning or whatever. Ended up not really being that closely related, except maybe the lightning guy, but um, they did end up at least being distinct. I think we should have snuck in a little uh, Dave Grossman figurine on the tiki bar, seeing as if you walk to his desk, he's got tiki trinkets all over the place. It would have been a nice mix. I did like that we managed to get Glenn Miller actually saying Baby Lindbergh Baby, uh, because uh, that, was that, that was my favorite character name, but nobody actually called him Baby Lindbergh Baby. <laughs> oh, and somebody I read somewhere online was very offended that we were making light of the uh, Lindbergh Baby uh, incident. Again, we offended people. Yeah, Again. I think it was t too soon. I started collecting yeah. the letters that, that we get from people because every episode we offend somebody with something. Well, well I, I send most of those letters, and what can I say? I just thought that was important. <laughs> Yeah, this um, this whole driving over bagpipes thing—I can't remember why. I remember during season one, just mentioning that randomly um, for something, and then we finally managed to put it in here. Um, it seemed it ended up being the theme for the season that every game is seems like some classic arcade game in some way, except for some reason you do it by driving. Um, but this one, I, I actually thought turned out pretty well. And the, the angry letters that we got from bagpipe players all over yeah. the world are not... Uh, I would never leave my bagpipe in the street. Are you crazy? Especially when you're an accordion. <laughs> Those jerks. Is this the last you might episode leave someone else's bagpipe on the street? Was able to do the blaster blaster? Uh, yeah, that's true. 
uh, for the recording for this. Well, we did um, recording for episode one and two at the same time, and uh, he he did all of all of Bluster's Bless was lying all in a row, and he was he was about to pass out. Uh, from doing it. He was straining so hard to scream these lines and so he politely emailed me and said, is there any way we can change his character and here are some ideas to how we could do it. So he did it my work for me. So this game was programmed by uh, John Drake um, and he had the idea of making it so that at the harder levels the, the accordions will automatically be placed near the bagpipe so that you would have to uh, quickly swerve. It was Jared's idea to put this song here. Actually, I think this is probably his best work. This da 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 da. I mean, that's just instant classic. It's very catchy. Hey, wow, who's, who's playing that so good? <laughs> and we're going to apparently hear the whole thing, including. The, the, the someone's going to get to a nice, uh, note to the, to the sound. <laughs> and then one quick newspaper breaking. <laughs> wow, it sounds really good when you <laughs> get them all in a row. Yeah, it's nice that you can still hit all the stuff on the sidewalks too while you're, while you're playing this game. No one can resist the jumps. It's very difficult to resist. I don't know the how, jumps. how. Is this song known outside of the United States? Well, I mean, one of our goals here was that unlike in a game like Guitar Hero, you are not, uh, you know, you don't have a chance to, to hear the song play in any capacity. Um, and so the, the hope was that you would recognize it as you were playing it. Um, so we were thinking, what would be a, a song well enough known? And then the work on the railroad was obviously related to what you're talking about with Glenn Miller, so that was a good choice. But I, I didn't know if anybody else outside the U.S. It's kind of an American classic. Yeah, that's uh, Canadians know about it. <laughs> well, I mean, if you live in the United States, I, I think. I mean, with somebody in Poland, though. Would say Roman Polanski. Or like Valesa. Like Valesa would know. I don't think like Roman Polanski would. Oh, I think Roman would. Speaking of obscure characters, it was fun to try to figure out who to put in here for the missing, um, the missing people that were reverted to babies. Yeah, Jimmy right. Hoffa seemed really clear. Jimmy Hoffa, Jimmy Hoffa Amelia Earhart Amelia were Earhart. just completely mm-hmm. obvious. Glenn Miller was... Uh, Glenn Miller, I, I like, just... Who? I happen to know that Glenn Miller was missing. I, I didn't think he was that obscure of a character. I didn't think no, he was that obscure no, either. He's definitely that, not. It's just that, that he's missing. missing. Is, I thought that was... I didn't not, think that was obscure not. either. That's the only, That's why the only reason... He's the only one that they mentioned. Wait, we didn't know you were a missing person. Right, right. Secret um, but yeah, it, it's hard for me to tell because I love big band music, so I was like, Glenn Miller, he's very well. I think giving him Jimmy Stewart's voice was a nice touch. <laughs> yeah. There's another fantastic character design, the uh, the ocean chimps. That was that was the thing I think I got most excited about for this episode was, mm-hmm. it was more putting sea monkeys really. in there. Because I want, I, man, I wanted sea monkeys. And then I, oh, and I had the uh, the sea monkeys on my desk that Dave Bogan murdered, and <laughs> viciously, <laughs> viciously. Uh, I think that murdered. was a voluntary manslaughter. I, we he, all he assume that they're to. dead, but I think, I think they're still living in that carpet <laughs> in Pelham and Anderson. I guess it would be <laughs> sea monkey slaughter. Dave felt very bad. I murdered them, so, so I had, had to recreate to the them in, in virtual reality yes. <laughs> for Heather for all time. <laughs> and now I forgive him. Although I still miss Harold. He's in a better place now. <laughs> Remember uh, whatever you want. learning many, many years ago that the Easter Island heads, many of them are actually full-bodied figures that, uh, that have just been buried up to right. the next. And I, I love this approach that we took with this, where there was another society living underneath the island that was worshipping the feet. Yeah. It's just really fun and somehow. These are guys are some amazing combination of monkey and seahorse. And squid. And squid. <laughs> and Jamaicans. Or octopus okay. or something. We did spend a little time thinking about what jobs these guys were going to have in relation to the feet. I remember there was going to be, like, uh, they were going to be working on the cuticles and uh, uh, sanding the, the calluses off. The <laughs> well, then we ended up making a puzzle where you could not reach the feet easily, so yeah. we had to lose that. 
this is probably an example of the, the best looking kind of effects that we have been able to pull off to date. Yeah. Uh, we've done some others in the later episodes, but this is probably the, the first example of where we started to stretch yeah, Marco out always has effects. Does and that's a, this is a Marcoism. This nice glowy water, underwater effect we're seeing here. And Marco Brezzo, he's effects wizard. I mean, it's so good, I, I don't even think about that as an effect. I just think I am underwater water. Like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why I called it out. <laughs> There's also, we don't get to play with the effects on, so we, uh, for the longest time, it was just like walking around, and you had to get reminded that they were underwater. Oh, I didn't want to talk over that. That was the uh, the lost <laughs> you reference. Did. You did. Talk you talked. I didn't want to. Now it's lost. <laughs> it's lost. That's gone forever. Mm. Just wanted to say that I had nothing to do with that. Idiot. I'm a big lost fan, but Ever since those heads started talking, you had I opened up the scene one time to find the hatch with the numbers on it. it was, mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, did a little giddy squeal called? and dance, I and then waited for the music <laughs> to come in from Jared. Oh, is that why you were squealing? <laughs> that, that's probably my favorite reference in the game is the, the musical. Uh, he does a little musical nod to the lost theme whenever they find something mysterious. Not that you don't look nice now, of course. That is it. I love the fact that Lincoln's head is attracted to the Moa heads. I don't know why. I'm not made of stone. You know what I mean. This was a really fun character arc to plan out, was the relationship between Lincoln and Sybil, um, which actually, I think this was the thing most solid in our, well, at least in my mind, when we started doing season two, because it had come up in season one, um, towards the end of designing season one, that we were just going to keep them around and wind up marrying them at the end of season two. <laughs> Right, so right at the end of season one, you know, they just had started their romance, so so we thought, here's a chance to see some, you know, what would a typical romance movie or art be? And, and, and this bit of it I, I really like, especially because it's a, it's a use of characters, and there they are in the environment, and you can talk to them, and you're interested in what's going on with them, but it actually has nothing to do with the, with the puzzles in the game or anything. So Yeah, it's, it's interesting really how people react to that. This. Some people really want every character to have a... I need to interact with them in order to progress in the game. I, I actually do kind of prefer that it doesn't feel like every character is merely a key to some puzzle, but rather sometimes characters are just hanging around, but to each his or her own. Did John Scrow push for having the Sam and Max kids in this game at all? Uh, way back in season one, I was asking everybody what they most liked about Sam and Max, what they wanted. He said the kids. We, we never could get them into season one, but I remembered him. And, in, in, mem in memoriam of John Scrow, even though, of course, he's still alive. Um, and still here. <laughs> I just think of him as dead, because I don't talk to him. He's dead to me. <laughs> John's another guy in the studio who kind of keeps everything together. He, Absolutely. He uh, keeps the path from art into the engine really clean, and we're able to get into the engine. And, Provide all the visuals really easily. He's a magician. This is all inspired by Bioshock. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was ironic, everyone. Um, the year before it came out. Uh, here's another one where uh, when we planned this one, uh, we said, okay, there's some sort of really tall kind of altar or something that Mr. Spatula is on. You, you just can't get up there and you, uh, there's, there's just no clear way, but once you become awarded high priest, you know, a staircase appears or anything. I don't really care what happens. There's just some way to get up there. And then Kim Lyons, who designed this environment, had this great idea for this encased bubble conveyor pod. And we said, oh, okay, well, if we're gonna make this, how is this gonna work? And so based on that design of the environment, we said, okay, well, we'll make the joke that it just moves very, very slowly. Um, they just keep talking and talking here. Yeah, we wanted to be the clunkiest Bondian evil villain. I'm telling you the entire plan possible. So not only is it a fish saying it, but he's having to be translated by a stupid person, basically. And it just goes on and on and on and on. And it keeps going. I suppose we can uh, 
and this, this bit of anticlimax. I'd always wanted to have some kind of, at some point there would be an anticlimactic end to something um, like this. That just seemed very Sam and Maxie. There's that one comic where they just step on a bug or something to end the thing. It's hard because you, you do want the end of the episode to feel very big and exciting. And so this one, it seemed like it, it could work because of the whole, now there's a volcano erupting. It didn't, it didn't quite work out, but that was the hope. I suppose it, it's okay now to talk about the fact that uh, originally we had talked about having the idea that uh, uh, Mr. Spatula would, would become the character of Max Salmon from the comics. Uh, and uh, Steve nixed that idea. He, d he didn't want uh, uh, that uh, Max Salmon's origin story to be, to be spilled in that, in that fashion. He wanted to keep that a mystery. So we decided to leave it as just good old Mr. Spatula. Oh, the good old sock crown. So we still don't know how Max Salmon came to be. Which is probably good. He won't tell us either. That's the second biggest Bermuda Triangle I've ever seen. Seems to be spinning out of control, too. How many times can we actually use that joke? <laughs> I mean, Get smart references never get old. Yeah, that was a good... I fail to see how this is helpful that was a good read on there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this, this is another one where I'm just asking John Scrotus to do some amazing stuff. We just said, and then there's a mega triangle, and it is just spitting out all kinds of crazy stuff. It's just the most intense vortex of doom, and it's very hard to have all these objects created and flying out, but you managed to pull it off with the cars flying through there. So this is another good example of how the portals were escalating. <laughs> how uh, cars and trees and plants are flying out of the portal while it's rotating and moving, and then giant Spouts of lava get spat into it, and, which gets nicely tied up in the last episode, I believe. <laughs> well, for that Dave volcano. Dave never wants to see another portal again. The more yeah. portals. For the volcano, we had to make it seem like if it erupts, it's going to hit them, so we had to tilt the top to point towards the Moai. But then later, in episode four, we needed to make it so that you could ball it up with a cork, so... We were kind of undecided on exactly what the shape of that thing should be. That sucks. And then, Except okay, they yeah, don't. they do. And so th th this episode, we knew we wanted to end it with there's some mysterious thing drawing you into the next episode. The music here really makes it seem like this is heavenly. <laughs> Just completely throwing you off, but a little foreshadowing. Bye-bye. Hello. I am Jeff Saar, character animator. Uh, Emily Morganti, marketing and PR. Scott Melzer, QA tester. John Drake, content programmer. Uh, this is the opening cutscene, and, and if you noticed, um, Max totally hid his, uh, right, well, right between the legs there in the fire hydrant. <laughs> There's the fake, uh, Hands in pockets. <laughs> kind of just, and here is Sybil um, running from the triangle, and uh, I, I think there's another shot of her running again, uh, kind of flailing her arms, and kind of a nod to uh, season one, episode four. There she goes. Yeah. <laughs> and you did that run. Yeah, yeah, the other. Yep. Can't think of she runs like a girl. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Glad that came across. <laughs> I hear a lot of things. What does it look like? Three sides, reddish, chasing Sybil. Oh, what you've got there is Yeah, that was one of those fine. when uh, of one of the big complaints people had in season one was that Sybil just sat around and didn't do anything. And so, oh, that's right, yeah. Well, prove to you she can run down the street. She and has legs. She'll spend the rest of the episode sitting around and not yes. doing anything. <laughs> was that well, she gets tired we very quick. Sorry, was that the first time we actually saw her legs move? Um, Maybe it was. She walked really briefly in culture shock, but that was like... Oh, that, wow. In culture yeah, shock. Because huh? um, <laughs> she sat down and never got up again. Giant ants! 
high shots. Great. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. talking about the mysterious cabal of controllers who summon the triangle as sentient portals. So this is the episode where uh, Nick got to lot, oh, watch sense. a lot of the uh, the girls gone wild. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for that trailer. Yeah, so. we did a girls gone wild spoof in our trailer. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the things that started out as a joke. <laughs> and then never got replaced by a real trailer. Good thing too. Was awesome. <laughs> it was. That was a pretty good trailer. <laughs> I like the, the fact that this is where Bosco finally, like, he's useful. Like, he's got some actual real information about this triangle because he's a conspiracy theorist and it's all about it. Pays off, yeah. What's <laughs> that? And it goes on for an uncomfortably long time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but they say you can train them if you can figure out how to communicate with them. How do we communicate with the triangle? They're very attracted to symbols and sigils. And sibyls, apparently. Those <laughs> two. Another They're translation. Uh... They're driven by shapes and colors. Nightmare. Pink rhombus oh, yeah. makes it nostalgic for the fifth. A red octagon makes it stop whatever it's doing. <laughs> a blue icosahedron makes it sit in its mom's basement and draw maps of dungeons. And they I can can't see that. Heat, so you've got to feed them a They don't have to be blue. What you want them to no, do. I have a lot of green ones and purple nope. seems to be a common color. <laughs> yeah, there she goes. Ah! Oh. Oh. It stopped. <laughs> well, there's another case solved. I heard screaming. Are you all right? Love how we never see how he gets places. He just <laughs> yeah, <out> exactly. <laughs> I want to see him rolling down the streets. Babe, no! Be strong, my marble darling. I'll save you. When she, and she jumps. Yeah. She can oh, jump too. <laughs> Super action heroes. Yeah. What do you think's on the other side, Sam? Well, we're setting it up for a platform. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the spin-off. Just getting the animations. seeking to bring chaos to this plane. You want to jump in? You can read my mind, Sam. I hope not. I remember when they first proposed this one, and I was just like, "Yeah, triangle, just be hanging in the middle of the street." Okay. Everyone, no one was quite sure what to make of that. I mean, in the opening credits, there, those pictures that scroll by. The first one that goes by very, very quickly is a picture of Steve Purcell. Oh, really? And I was convinced that everybody was going to see it, and uh, it's actually the same picture that's in his author picture in the paperback Surf on the Highway, and that hadn't come out yet. And I was like, you can't put that in, and everyone's going to see it. Well, no one Give away really, the surprise, and nobody saw it. No one really noticed that yet. the uh, no, picture in 104 I didn't of, of, of Washington is actually yeah, Steve Purcell, too. Yeah, it's also, yeah. than I imagined a horrific <laughs> alternate dimension to be. It's a really nice environment. It is. I think this is the first time you ever saw a blue sky yeah. in a Sam and Max game. Baby. And oh, there she's she's sitting. <laughs> a little differently, though. <laughs> yeah, a different sitting. Uh... Later. Oh, hi, Sam and Max. Are you guys on vacation? It's actually <laughs> one of my favorite episodes just because it's so different. Unimaginable horrors beyond the portal of mystery. You could have at least had the courtesy to be impaled on spikes or something. Step aside, Harvey, you're blocking my tan. I really well, like this the subplot thought, with uh, Lincoln and this is giant great. stone heads. Yeah, the, the love triangle. <laughs> in the Bermuda Triangle. Uh -huh. At crux of all paranormal activity in the South Pacific, commonly known as Easter Island. Because once you leave, three days later, you can't wait to come back. Abe and I saw <laughs> Dying is that joke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Emphasis on alone. I love the, the kind of subplot of their relationship, too, and the fact that it, it progressed very quickly. They went from, like, first date to honeymoon here to, to break up. Took a year. This is true. <laughs> they didn't quite get together until the end of the last season. Well, all right. And they're just big feet, right? Yeah, down underneath, yeah. What exactly I think that was Doug's idea. He was really? like, yeah, they should have giant feet sticking out in the bottom. <laughs> it pays off. Yeah. Worship giant feet. <laughs> there were actually, there were some reviewers who wrote in who were very confused about the feet. They didn't understand that the feet and the heads were connected. <laughs> really? All right. <laughs> After the okay. cutscene that showed them. The feet and the head, yeah. The yeah. <laughs> moving. <laughs> This game came out about a month after Portal, and there were so many people, oh, we can see you were totally inspired by Portal, weren't you? 
course. Yeah. Like, yeah, this was actually in development long before that came out. Everyone loved Portal, but... Yeah. In this case, we're not going to pay you. Deadbeat really is the universal language. <laughs> so this is the, uh, the babies. The babies, yeah. A little disturbing. <laughs> there was actually another uh, puzzle with the babies that involved taking drinks that got cut. That was one, like my favorite puzzle, and then it got cut because nobody in the playtest liked it, which made me think that uh, my taste is apparently compromised. <laughs> <laughs> was that was that when the uh, was that puzzle still in the bad build that Game Tab put out? It on? was, yeah. The um, this episode, uh, there was an alpha build that um, somehow accidentally ended up in Game Tab's client on launch day, and uh, people uh, some people noticed because there were just missing graphics and the title sequence was all screwed up, and so people noticed it. And reported it but um, before they were able to pull it down some people actually did play the whole thing and my favorite we actually got an email from somebody or he posted in the forums that it was like yeah you know I was just I was thinking that there were really a lot of bugs in the game and I was kind of surprised but I didn't actually realize until the end uh, when I got to the part where it said insert end credits here <laughs> there was actually something wrong with it. It takes a hardcore fan to play an entire yeah. game like that. <laughs> like, ah, it's like ah telltale you guys are really falling asleep on the job. <laughs> Swing dancing. So wh who are the babies again? That's yeah. Glenn Miller. Glenn Miller, Amelia Earhart, uh, D.B. Cooper, and um, Lindbergh baby. And in the other room, there's, um, or at the, in front of the cave, is uh, the baby oh, the, uh, uh, Hoffa. Jimmy Hoffa. Hoffa. Yeah. I, I didn't know who most of these people were. Anything new in the auto Getting business? behaviors for those babies is really tough. Yeah. <laughs> Naturally. The cops are the best, <laughs> always. And the driving. <laughs> and what, what are they doing in this episode again? <laughs> Gotta get the, uh, the car horn by um, running over accordions. Bagpipes. Bagpipes and accordions. Avoid the accordions. Yeah. Hit the bagpipes. Bagpipe obliteration extreme. <laughs> this is the last episode where Bluster Blaster has his voice. Uh, yeah. Because Jared, who provides oh, the voice was going hoarse because of it so they had to really uh, yeah so they had to change his voice yeah. it's, it's kind of hard to constantly scream yeah for voice. like a week after recording he, he uh, <laughs> had had voice problems so they had to <laughs> scale it back Did we just blow your mind <laughs> I don't like to brag, but my prowess at Banjo Legend Extreme is pretty renowned throughout the tri-state area. Oh, Sam. <laughs> who came up with the name Kurt? Like, was that a Steve? Or who came up with those names for those guys? Uh, probably, um, Brendan. Dave and Brendan, and yeah. You're saying that music video games already exist? Failure! In a world where folk music instruments litter the mean streets, your mission is clear. Destroy all the bagpipes! <laughs> Don't we have to destroy the bag? What's his tag, sir? Uh, none of your business. Oh. My name is none of your That's way too complicated. Calculating this was, we didn't, the video didn't show the driving from 201, but we made a point in 202 of, or in season two of making the driving actually Yeah, different every, different every time. Would you like to play our game? Let's do it. The reviewers noticed too. They yeah, said, people were happy about that. The driving wasn't as irritating this time. <laughs> yeah, it was fun and different. Hit the bagpipes. Collect and awesome stickers. And you, John, you did most of the driving yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, well, I, I, I programmed it. Yeah. Um, and but yeah, pretty much anything you. So, I mean, uh, I didn't do any of the animation. Oh, here parts, we go. Uh, and <laughs> a lot of it is uh, taken from season one. <laughs> What I love about this is that every time you play, there's like there's a different song, and it starts to play like the different. It's like the World of Max song from season one <laughs> is in there, and the the tune that plays in their office, and it's really cool. Yep, as the difficulty increases, the uh, the songs change. Show off. The ram. <laughs> and the stuff with the decals and everything is that something that you worked on, or? Uh, I, yeah, I, I unlocked them. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we'll get a chance to see any of the. Uh, you know, the sort of secret decal objects that uh, the duck fly through the world. Yeah, yeah the, the, the duck was... Uh, <laughs> Nothing like a giant rubber ducky. People, uh, you know, there are fans who have a lot more dedication than I do because 
people did go through and play to get all the decals, and then of course at the end you get like the super. Oh, that was sweet. Secret the, thing. Yeah, uh, huge like cop lights on your car and everything. Have you gotten all the decals? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's my job. <laughs> I made your friends. Be sure to come back soon and play. It's a great again. poster of the uh, female Don't robot babe I'll put it back on the <laughs> car. <laughs> Let's get started making musical history, boys. <laughs> the song they make has to be my favorite in the entirety of season two. <laughs> Rapanui Choo Choo. We'll, we'll talk to my agent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hmm. This tastes familiar. I can't place exactly where. Oh, wait. That's, that's skipped over a bit. Yeah. That's Fountain of Youth Water for you. Sorry, oh, that was that, uh, that scream. To the little guy, but it's for the good of the island. Attached to who? Oh, right. Did he leave his <laughs> Anybody home? We're here to fix your volcano. Yeah, we skipped a lot. We skipped the electrocuting of the piranhas and everything. For that, you'll have to play the game. You're all going to do that. <laughs> I don't like how their tentacles move. You threaten defeat! You must answer to our leader, the high yeah, The underwater beast. effects came out great. Yeah, it looks nice. I wish the <laughs> Sam and Max swam instead of walking around. But... Mighty Kamehameha doing that would have been kind of cool. Kind of like how they were so floating the in feet. space. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're the feet. We didn't really have the animation for it. What's that in the background? Yeah. Yeah. Where? In the background? Behind Sam and Max, it looks oh, like yeah. there's a car. Yeah, time, yeah. yeah there's, uh, I think there's like a submarine and some stuff that's Falling down. It's a crash plane, a bunch of boxes of uh, lost video games. <laughs> if you watch him carefully during you gameplay, you'll see Max occasionally dead. float up. Oh, yeah? yeah? He's got a float idol. Now, hang well, on. he just, yeah, he, did, he does have a float idol set. actually from 106, but uh, yeah. Because he, uh, the true high priest. Mm, yeah, he'll swim up just a little bit and then come back down. <laughs> Look. We ancient civilization that worship giant feet who speak to us who go. I love the line about the five pigs. the five pig. Well, they take it from the five little pigs. The five toes. Is, <laughs> he prove it by fulfilling the ancient prophecies. I bet there are three of them. <laughs> he is our ancient traditions. Maybe he really is the chosen one. We want have to have the rule of three enough. everywhere. Yeah. But we can make fun of it. <laughs> Okay. What is he I doing? <laughs> oh, mighty feet! Give us a sign. Do you recognize this white stranger as your servant? <laughs> you get this Love the way they talk. You worship feet? Yes. <laughs> the great feet that hang over us. It's an S and M game about people who worship feet. <laughs> <laughs> There's no hidden message in yeah. there. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> to his people. While the second watch over his people always. One go to market, one stay home. The third teach us to appreciate our dead nature. While the fourth teach us purity of the fast. One half roast. I think I learned this way back when I was like five. When the end times and come, it's come back to you in your professional life. Home. And it's awesome, it's hilarious, I love it. His people home to paradise. Wee, 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 wee. <laughs> wow, we really are off course, vanished, set adrift, and disoriented. But what does it all mean, Sam? I don't feel like waiting around for years to find out. <laughs> That's a lost reference, I love right? how we mock <laughs> lost right there. Beautiful, that gentle breeze and that melody This is a great, oh, great part. Best scene. <laughs> Is when she Amy? cries or yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah actually. Head started talking. You haven't heard one word I've said. Right. What? Oh, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I hadn't noticed. I love that this has nothing for really to do with this episode. Hey, it's just set up for Sybil. I mean, Sybil. What comes later? Have you ever thought about getting some surgery done? What? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Your nose stretched out some, maybe you squared off the head a little. You look fantastic. Not that you don't look nice now, of course. That is it. You've done nothing but stare at her this entire time. Come on, I'm a man. I'm not made of stone. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean, all right. You're just in a mood. No, I'm not. <laughs> I will long remember what you said here. And I will never oh, Daniel forget did all this. did all short. 
Yeah. I yeah. can't believe you'd insult me like this. He's really good at the awkward silences. The awkward moments, yeah. Birthday. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> So here he's wow. he's a little bit older, and, and a few people notice that he starts to have gray in his in his hair, and he's using a different instrument. <laughs> right awesome. yes. Yeah. The best awkward silence. Oh, well, we actually show Sybil <laughs> she got getting up, yeah. getting up and running. <laughs> well, wow. I never see that again. So. <laughs> Season three. <laughs> yes. Oh, so Kid Sam and Max are awesome. <laughs> it's totally an excuse to get away with fourth grade humor. Yeah. I like how they run around and, and Sam just runs around going bang bang. Yeah. <laughs> See Max playing the video game? Yeah. In the in 204 he does. Oh, it's 204? Yeah. Oh. Uh, they come back. And they go back to uh, 1980s stinky. Um, Sam's shirt there, the, these are modeled after drawings that Steve did of Sam and Max and kids, and he had the Max shirt. Um, but if you play the game, if you, if you play it all the way through and then play it again, he'll have a different shirt. There are really? three or four different ones. Yeah. Uh, it changes about four times. Yeah. <laughs> Easter egg. High priest, take right for place on altar. What? <laughs> Uh, the whole Mr. Spatula storyline is kind of convoluted here. Yeah. I guess he's a ghost of the Mr. Spatula that died in 201. No. Yeah, <laughs> he is. He was sent back, supposedly sent back from hell from the poppers to distract them. Uh-huh. Sam and Max. I don't know. The whole time travel and hell thing. <laughs> we just kind of threw it together, I think. I thought we were pals. I think if you ask Chuck, he probably would have a very... Uh, he has really detailed... A very detailed map of how this came to be. <laughs> no, he said. They had to res up the Mr. Spatula. The one from season one wasn't high res enough for them to do close ups like that. So. And the angry ass. I knew I should have taken him for more walks. Plus, myself. we had to get some, some tech to uh, make him transparent like no, that. Yeah. yeah. You think you won, Simon Max. You really just step in trap. I send triangle <laughs> to summon you here. And you stupid primitive. <laughs> nice. Showing the same we shot over again. Yeah. <laughs> just move slightly it's because up. He, yeah. It's because he didn't take the parking brake off. Yeah, he realizes he has the <laughs> emergency <laughs> brake on. <laughs> I just lo I, I love this episode because it's just so bizarre. Like There's just so many weird things that are going on. Yeah, the, I don't know. I felt like this was the first one where they really kind of nailed the just weird Sam and Max. You never know what's going to happen. Like this long conversation. <laughs> so long. <laughs> this, just, this just feels like something Steve would do in a comic. You know, pages and pages of... Oh, just like exposition. Yeah. <laughs> so like exposition. Followed by, oh, I forgot to take off the parking brake. <laughs> the long, evil laugh. The anticlimactic win. <laughs> Tip. <laughs> yeah. Now he say, my medallion. No. <laughs> be. What world? What world? That sock crown that he loses is awesome. You can pick it up and have Max wear it around for the rest of the episode. I think that was actually one of those last minute things that got added because uh, Jake wanted it. <laughs> Which is good, because it, it adds a whole new dimension of awesome. Bogan had to animate the socks so that they would move. So they bounced yeah. the they bounced, yeah. I suppose now's as good a time as any. That, uh, that timer there looks suspiciously like one in a toy factory in 103. Yeah, yeah, I recognize that. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. That gauge is obviously not the same Reuse texture. Reuse of acid. <laughs> yes, there it is. Sock crown. <laughs> Regal Max. doing the Eucharist on a nitro burning catamaran. That's the second biggest Bermuda Triangle I've ever seen. Seems to be spinning out of control too. Well, there goes our only way. We skipped a lot of the game. How this is helpful in an emergency. There was this thing with the gong. They showed the gong. It just didn't have the line where they're like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. I remember doing yeah. something with sticking his arm through was the... Was this was your scene? 
blink. <laughs> or is this Tim's actually? This, this is, is now. T- is this the end? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah this is Tim's. I love end. how we connect this to the very end of the season. Yeah. You said it, dude, bro. <laughs> Man, that dude's <laughs> bugging. Does the other guy talk? He mumbles. Oh, really, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. A lot more, lot more stoner humor this this season. I was really surprised that they went as far as they went. Stoner <laughs> like, and, I, and like fart jokes. Yeah. <laughs> So when did Sybil run off to? We don't know. She's on the island somewhere. <laughs> the island only has two rooms to it, so. She found a desk to sit at. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging out with the babies behind the bar. Can you float, Mr. Lincoln? Only one way to find out. <laughs> Does the giant stone head float? <laughs> you can only call that once we get in the water. <laughs> I guess we we'll just sit here for another few thousand years. But wait. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> There's more. This was the first episode to have a little thing after the credits like this, and they ended up doing it for all the rest of them, too. <laughs> yeah. Nice. First hint at the, uh, <laughs> the mariachi's origins. And that's 202. There we go. All right. Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening.